Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to today's event. I'm Jason Gumper from msdynamicsworld.com. I am pleased to uh, welcome everyone to today's session. Our main presenter today is Eduardo Arias of Power Objects, and today's session is all about introducing you to Visual Studio with uh, Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. Uh, as we get started, please do know that we welcome your questions, and uh, you can enter them really at any point throughout the event. Look for the Q&A block uh, on the right side of the WebEx window. Um, put your questions in there, and I know Eduardo will be leaving time uh, for uh, for taking your questions. So um, I know there's also a lot of content, so without any further delay, uh, I'm going to hand things off to uh, Eduardo to get us started. So uh, Eduardo, welcome. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, Jason, can you hear me? I can. I can. Okay, cool. Um, let me just uh, hide this. Yeah. Sorry. So my name is Eduardo Arias. Um, I work for Power Objects. Uh, Power Objects is 100% uh, focused on Microsoft Dynamics 365, and we are uh, currently implementing um, Microsoft Dynamics CRM and Dynamics 365 FNO. Um, I am a technical solutions architect for Power Objects. Um, I know my picture is uh, kind of weird, <laughs> but um, but it will do. Um, I've been working for Power Objects since December last year. Uh, prior to that, I've been working with the Dynamics OBX technology for uh, probably about 10 years and going through all the versions. Um, today, we're going to focus on Around is you know the the you know creating branching uh, in Dynamics uh, in Visual Studio for Dynamics 365 FNO. Let me go to my next uh, slide here. So um, in this presentation, we're going to go through topics, right? Uh, high level, what is branching? I'm pretty sure that you know some of you guys are probably most likely most of you guys understand what's branching, right? Um, in order to create uh, or to, you know, utilize branching in, in VSTS and also in Dynamics uh, 365 FNO, uh, we need to create a VSTS account. So we're going to go through some of those steps on how to do that. Um, most likely, uh, most of you guys have this, so bear with me. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to also provide this basic knowledge to uh, people that might not know this. Um, then we're going to go in through the VSTS new project creation. Uh, that's where you know we're going to branch um, um, off, and we're going to go through those steps. Then we're going to uh, talk about a little bit about the uh, how to link a VSTS account with LCS. What are the steps needed so um, you know someone can utilize LCS fully uh, around the work items um, that are coming from PSPS and manage an implementation from LCS 100%. Um, uh, then we're going to create a new dev branch um, in PSPS, and this is an important step because you can use this step to create uh, further branches. Um, in your VSPS branch architecture, and then we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, setting up a dead branch for builds. What are the steps that we need there? Uh, and, there and, and there's going to be a bonus uh, slide um, around agile deployment, um, and we'll talk about that when we get there. So let me start by um, so what is branch? So really, branching, right? It's a uh, or, or we use branching, right, to to duplicate objects, right? And these objects are, um, you know, most of the time under source control, right? Um, this is important, right, because we want to make sure that modifications can happen in parallel. Uh, you may have seen, especially in Dynamics 365 FNO implementations, right? Um, nowadays. Uh, using Visual Studio, you, you, you can have multiple developers uh, working in, in your project. Uh, we want to make sure that we provide the basics uh, of these developers so they can um, utilize branching 
to take care of to to guard your 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 code, right? Um, we we want to make sure that we invite multiple developers into our project so they can work in multiple objects, um, and that's why branching is so important. Um, so there is a few uh, type of branches, right? Um, in in general, right? Uh, we have a parent branch, and then we have child branches. Uh, in the in the MS three fifty five FNO for VSPS, when you set the, the environment up from LCS into VSPS, uh, what you will have is a very generic branching strategy uh, that you can build off uh, or or from. And uh, most likely, what's going to happen is that you may want to include um, a, a, a very specific segregation of parent branches and child branches. Um, for example, in VSDS, you when you set up VSDS for the first time, uh, you will have a name branch, right? Um, and and we will see how to uh, how to do that um, in further steps. So. What are the motivations for branching, right? Um, and you, you, you know, this is largely um, uh, or specifically driven by the size of your project. Uh, if you are implementing the MS three hundred and sixty-five XML and you have no customizations whatsoever, uh, then branching may not be a good uh, uh, suit for you. Uh, if you have large projects where you are implementing the MS three hundred and sixty-five XML in the United States, for example, and and, and you're going to have you know, multiple um, uh, modifications, uh, then that's when you will need branching, right? Um, also, uh, a good motivation for branching is how do you manage multiple releases, right? As we go through the development process, build process, uh, per se, how do we manage, right, the releases of new features into the system um, so branching can be very useful to understand what is changing, what has changed, what is ready to be tested, uh, what is ready to be released to, let's say, a staging environment, uh, and therefore into a production environment. Um, and also another mo motivation for branching is that it allows contributors to isolate changes, right? And, and, and by that I mean that uh, when, let's say that we're developing something uh, in our branching, I mean, in, in our code, uh, we release that into tests. Um, you know, there is a testing from a functional consultant, let's say. Uh, they say that it's cool. That goes into a, into a user acceptance testing or UIT testing. And then our customers say, hey, you know what? Uh, this is great, but I would like to change a few things. Uh, the motivation for branch in this scenario is that you want to isolate this change, this, this specific change, probably create a new extension, um, you know, on, on your object, uh, make a modification. So branch will allow you to do that. So now, uh, in order to utilize branching, right, we need to create a VSDS account and. Um, and you know, we, we go through the steps. There are some pre uh, prerequisites in, in, uh, for for this, and basically, you know, you need that that MS three hundred and sixty-five FNL um, installed and configured, right? You will do that through LCS, um, and once this is done, uh, you will be able to start um, uh, preparing for your VSPS account setup. Um, also, another prerequisite is that you know. You need some basic understanding of Visual Studio, right? Everything is managed through Visual Studio. Yes, it's true. We can see branches from VSDS itself, but the managing, uh, the management of merging different changes from branch to branch needs to be done from Visual Studio. Um, and also, you need some basic understanding of VSDS uh, or Visual Studio Online, and also. Um, um, you need to have a, you know, uh, an MS three hundred and sixty-five FNL hosted in Azure, right? Um, the other uh, important aspect of this is that um, you will have to manage your, um, uh, you know, user access to Azure. Um, in terms of permissions, 
um, you know, anyone that is actually um, uh, working with code directly from a development perspective will need uh, secure administration roles. Um, it, it will need local administrative rights into that AOS server, and, and most likely, you know, our developers and our technical architects and, and so on and so forth will, will, will need access to those machines as administrators. Um, and then from a VSDS perspective, we will need a project administrator uh, uh, permission for that specific uh, uh, VSDS team project. Uh, you know, some customers, uh, they manage uh, 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 permissions differently, and that's fine. Um, if the our customer or our partner, they they want to manage um, the, um, or, or, or they want us to manage their VSDS for them, we will have to be project uh, to set up a VSPS account, you will go to you know, uh, you know visualstudio.com, and then there is uh, you will see a screen like this one, right? And you will click on the free Visual Studio button. Uh, there is you can start using VSPS uh, for free, right? Uh, VSPS comes with five free basic licenses. And I don't want to get into licenses too much, but a basic, like a, a basic license would allow you to actually, you know, uh, take in code, manage your VSDS, work items, um, you know, merge things between branches, and so on and so forth. So, you know, you, you can start using these tools for free, which is great. Um, if you want any additional uh, basic licenses, then you will have to uh, um, link your VSDS account with an password subscription, um, and uh, most likely, you know, each additional account will, will cost you around like $6. I mean, and, and I know that there is a lot of changes around licensing, so that's why I don't want to get into licensing so, uh, uh, so much. Uh, then you will um, sign in with your work account, and you will be able to start creating your VSPS account. Now, when you create a, um, a new VSPS account, right, um, the idea is that you, you create a, a link, right? That link will be used in many different places uh, around your implementation. Um, in, th in this specific example that I have here um, is that you can use, let's say, a customer name that visuals to your account, right? If you're a partner and you're managing their, uh, the, the customer VSPS, uh, I will recommend you still use the name of your customer, even though you're managing uh, yourself. If you have a sandbox uh, VSPS for your internal operations, um, you know, just just you know, create a, a very relevant name uh, because you can create many of these, right? Um, and and basically, we want to narrow down any um, uh, error uh, because of URLs. So when you do that. Um, you will have to choose Team Foundation version control. Um, you know, we don't, you know, it, at, at this point in time, Git um, is, is not supported uh, for the Linux uh, uh, certified FNO. The good news is that I read just a week ago that Git was, a, or will be, or was acquired by Microsoft or something like that. So we may <clears throat> see in the future this changing, and that's very exciting. So uh, then you will go ahead and create a new um, a project, right? So the next section is how do we create a new project in VSDS? And basically, the um, from the VSDS account page, when you have created a specific URL, right, um, and you know uh, what your link, quote unquote, is going to be, uh, you will land into this page or something similar. You know, Microsoft's updating this site uh, constantly, and um, so then you will create a you know new new project, right? What this will do, it will give you the possibility to actually choose what template do you want to use, right? So there is two templates, uh, well, there's three really, uh, two that I that I've been using uh, forever. Uh, one is Agile, or the other or the other one is Scrum. Right. Agile will focus on, from a VSTS perspective, will focus more on the, um, the user story, right? And Scrum will focus more on the product backlog, right? At the end of the day, they're the same. I think that Agile 
can be modified and provide uh, more relevant uh, uh, information for your implementation. Uh, Scrum, um, and, and also in Agile, I've seen that you can modify certain things. Uh, you can add fields into your VSDS and things like that. The Scrum seems to be a little bit more restrictive. Um, that may have changed, but I've been using you know Agile for for a while. Um, and as I mentioned before, Git is not supported at this time. Hopefully, it will be in the future. Um, so when we're creating access, right, um, usually in a project, uh, the people that are going to be using your VSDS project the most are a technical architect and also developers, right? Um, let's not forget about functional consultants. They should be involved in this process heavily as well. Um, and if they're not, then there is a problem. I will, I will encourage you to go back and revisit your, your plan for, um, you know, uh, testing UNT and UAT. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned before, really a technical architect and developers will need uh, uh, basic licenses. Uh, you know, if you want financial co uh, uh, functional consultants to uh, contribute uh, to the testing process, which I will encourage you to do, uh, then they will need basic licenses as well. Uh, someone that is in your, in, in your organization that doesn't need interaction with BSPS meaning, you know, uh, taking in code, uh, changing work items. They could be a, a stakeholders, and those licenses are free. Uh, and you can have, you know, uh, as, as many as you want. Uh, you can also sign in to BSDS with your MSDN subscription. Um, so if you have any, uh, if you're a customer and you work with a partner, uh, and, you know, and the partner happens to have uh, MSDS subscriptions, they could use those to sign into BSDS, um, and that way you don't have to consume your basic licenses. Also, uh, every time that you will want to uh, uh, provide access to team members, the project owner needs to do this, right? Um, if you provide a basic license and provide the project owner right to let's say a technical architect or a developer or, or whoever, right, a, a project manager, you know, they can do this for you, right? But uh, the project owner is the one that needs to add um, new members into VSDS, into a, a specific VSDS project. So then when you have created your project, you know, you're ready to go, then what you want to do is to link your VSDS account with LCS. Um, and um, LCS obviously is a platform where you can deploy your, uh, you know, cloud environment, um, and and pretty much, you know, you, uh, Microsoft can help you provision, you know, require UAT and production environments for your implementation, right? Uh, in LCS, as you may know, you know, we can store, you know, assets which are code, or deployable packages data packages, and many other things. We can drive our business process modeler, task recorders, and help systems uh, through LCS. So in order to do this, um, what needs to happen, you will go into LCS, you will go into project settings, uh, and, and pretty much connect uh, that BSDS with your LCS by clicking the setup, which is the Studio Team Services button. When you do that, um, you can also, um, you will have to actually go into getting a token. Uh, this token can be accessed through the security button, and basically you will go through these steps, right? So you will click on the personal access token, uh, you will click add, um, you will enter a description for that to, uh, uh, token. We recommend that you use the maximum duration, which is one year. Um, and then um, we, we also uh, uh, click all the scopes um, instead of just clicking, you know, a, a few of them. And then you will click create token. What this will do, it will give you this token, right? And I'm putting this in red here because you have to make sure <clears throat> that you copy this token, right? Uh, once uh, you exit BSDS, and if you haven't copied this token, it's gone. Uh, there is no way that you can get it back. Uh, so then you will have to probably, I mean, probably repeat the process. Um, 
and then you will go back to LCS um, at your uh, VSPS uh, uh, customer or partner uh, link and then you will add your personal token and then uh, uh, click continue and that will create the relationship that you need uh, from VSPS and LCS. Uh, what that will do, that will allow you to go into your LCS project. Uh, you could go into the tile called work items and you will be able to link your VSPS work items uh, uh, directly into LCS. Uh, this is a very good tool uh, for project managers, right, uh, and project owners, uh, infrastructure um, uh, resources, and also, you know, everybody else. Uh, since the uh, TAs and, and developers will be focused more on the actual VSPS side and in the instances, um, you know, we, I mean, I don't, I don't look at this too, uh, too much, but many other people will be able to benefit for linking your VSPS to LCS. So when that's done, right, now is the time where you will have to create your debt branch, right? Um, you know, you will need this in order to start the uh, uh, development. You can start using your, uh, your main branch if you want to, right? Uh, we don't recommend that, however, right? Because at the end of the day, what you want is to isolate, as we discussed earlier, you know, your changes in branches and being able to release those changes, um, you know, in a timely manner, but but also with precision, right? Um, so the steps to create in a branch are are many steps. Uh, and let me check the time here. Okay. Um, so usually uh, the um, the uh, output, right? It will be to have something like we see here, right? Where you know we when 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 you start this setting up uh, the environment the, the environment with LCS and, and all that, you will just get this main branch, right? Um, the objective of this section is that we're going to create this dev branch um, and to be utilized by our developers um, and technical architects. So basically, uh, it's very important that when we're creating a dev branch, uh, that we will have a build environment in place. Right, uh, build environment is where all our code is going to go to. Uh, that's where we're going to create our automated builds, and also where we're going to create our deployable packages um, from. And um, uh, and I think that uh, okay. So basically, uh, from BSPS, right, you can go into your code button, right, and you can go to files, and you can see your branch in here, right, uh, which is a very quick way of understanding your branch architecture. You can also look at your chain sets uh, directly from VSPS. You can do code reviews directly from VSPS if you want to look some code, um, at, at some code. The, the great thing about it is that when you are taking objects uh, under your chain set, you, you will be able to see the differences what was added um, into that code. So code reviews tend to be faster uh, doing it from the SPS instead of just looking at, um, you know, pure extra plus code uh, in Visual Studio. So if there is no dev VM at this point, right, <laughs> then you need to stop and get one established, right? Uh, so it is great that you are setting up SPS and maybe you're playing around uh, with the different options, but um, if you don't have a dev box, right, uh, or something similar to it, uh, you need to create one because we don't want to connect this to any other environment than dev box for now. So then to create a new branch, right, um, the first thing that we need to do is kind of like to delete the uh, main branch workspace, right? And as we all know, uh, uh, you know, Visual Studio creates um, automatically workspaces per branch, per user. Um, and there is certain scripts that you can use to do this very fast, uh, but you will have to change kind of like the ownership uh, with your user ID if that's not already done so. Um, and basically, uh, you will create a, uh, you will branch from the main branch to create a new dev branch. And the way that you do it 
is that you go into your main branch metadata folder, right? Uh, you right click and then you click branch, right? Um, that, you know, and that's where you know the main branch at this point uh, will be your parent branch because you are creating a child branch from your from your parent branch, which is main, right? So so dev will be your child from main. Then you can release code if you want to, uh, and we're gonna see that at the end. Uh, you know, through branching very easily when you have this hierarchy. Um, then we have the, um, in order, when, when you're creating this uh, uh, the dev branch, right, you, you will get this, this kind of like little window, right? And what you will do is say, well, you know what, from my source, which is the main metadata, right, uh, I want to create a target. Right, and when you do that, uh, automatically uh, Visual Studio will give you this type of target, right? Because it doesn't know that you want to create this child uh, with a specific name, so it will say, "Well, this is a new version, therefore, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to take the same root, which is transmit metadata, and I'm just going to add a new branch to it." Um, what we do really is that we change the target into something more relevant for uh, our implementation. You can do, you, you can name it, uh, you know, anyway. And, and so uh, we name it uh, trunk dev metadata, right, instead of this name. Because uh, at the end of the day, you're going to create a local repository somewhere, right, uh, to manage your uh, dev branch. Usually that's done in the server itself when you are setting up uh, your, or you're hooking up your Visual Studio Dynamics 365 FNO uh, code with a specific VSPS branch. Uh, so that's why we want to provide relevant names. Uh, at some point, you're going to have to go and manage code through source control. And, um, and if you don't have you know, relevant names, it's just going to become really difficult to manage. So then, um, I think that uh, is it. Oh, I think that I have a duplicate slide. Um, my apologies. Um, okay. So now, um, what we want to do, right, is we want to map, right, this specific dev metadata branch that we have into our local server, right? That's very, very, very um, uh, important. You know, obviously, there is no way that you can do branching uh, or change the release through branching without mapping your um, your branch into your uh, into your server. Uh, also, you know, we want to do that because we want to incorporate our model, our extension, uh, into the uh, AOS, right? Uh, and so we can create automated builds out of our, you know, custom code um, as if it were, you know, the, the standard code. So what's, what's going to happen is that um, when you start mapping, right, this, uh, this code into your server, uh, you will get this window on the left, right? This window uh, will automatically um, I mean, you will you will go and browse your your folder. You need to add this uh, right away into the AOS service package of the directory. But you know, because you are you have a metadata you know uh, uh, ending uh, word on your branch, which is correct. What this will do is will try to create for you a metadata folder automatically. Uh, you, you need to make sure, right, that you delete that uh, metadata folder um, and in there, and your window should look like this. The reason for that, that if you don't do that, then you're going to create a subdirectory in your package local directory, um, and then it will really mess things up, right? Um, uh, so it's very important that your dev branch is created on the root of the package local directory uh, and not under a new directory called metadata. So then, um, when we are 
uh, uh, you know, pretty much done with that. Um, what we need to do is map or branch the uh, project, uh, 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 you know, part of the main um, part of the main branch. And the reason is that now we want to own that project, right? Uh, you know, on the dev branch. So we need to, in other words, you know, in other words, what we want to do is to create a mirror between our original main branch and our new child dev branch. So we will have to pretty much follow the same steps, um, and we will have to merge that project into the dev branch um, in our new um, uh, architecture. So when that happens, uh, same thing. You know, you will you will branch that. You will get the latest version for that project. Um, because at the end of the day, nothing has changed in that in that main branch. Hopefully, um, you know, following the right steps, and um, you will just branch uh, from your parent into the child to have the same structure that you have in your parent. Uh, so when that happens, right? Uh, you know, we're gonna have to have, um, you, you know, so so when when you are merging, uh, you know, all the all the code into the dev branch, uh, automatically Visual Studio understands that in your dev branch you have a delta, right? There is something new that was merged uh, and needs to be uh, something needs to happen for it, right? In order to utilize uh, source control, obviously, and to be effective, we need to. Um, taking these changes, uh, you know, um, in order to maintain them uh, in our, you know, VSPS server. Um, so basically, uh, when when you do that, right? Um, when you go in and merge something into a new branch, um, you know, there is a few ways that you can, uh, you know, make sure that your changes are being reflected, right, uh, into your new branch. So you can go into your uh, uh, solution explorer. Um, you can click that button, it's called Pending Changes. Um, usually, you know, when, when you do that, you will see, uh, and this is actually, you know, what you will merge from your main branch to your dev branch, uh, you will see included changes. Uh, alternatively, you can always, and uh, when most of the time, exclude changes, right? Which is very cool from a branching perspective. Um, so let's say that you have multiple modifications uh, in your solution and uh, you're changing multiple things. You can narrow this down to a specific object uh, or uh, projects within your solution to check in, excluding other ones uh, for a later time. Um, when that's done, uh, you can actually go here and check in your code, right? Um, when you do that, uh, you you will have to or you're required to add a comment, and basically uh, this comment will carry on through your chain set, uh, so you can manage those uh, later, and, and we'll take a, a, a peek at that. So now, uh, you know, after you have done that, right? Uh, we want to make sure that you are setting up your dev branch for automated builds. Um, the the steps for that are that in your VSDS uh, window, uh, there is a file called AX Project Module Build that project, right? And um, basically, you will download this file, um, and then um, you know you will you will copy this file. Uh, let me go to the next slide, um, and then you will upload this file into your main branch. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, dev branch. Uh, what this will do, it will create something very similar to uh, to this. Uh, well, you will have to also take in your changes into that specific uh, uh, dev branch from BSDS, and the, the you know the result will be that now, right? We have our dev branch uh, and main branch with a metadata folder uh, with a project folder and our project for uh, build, right? And, and then there is like, you know, different steps to set up your build uh, that you can actually use, um, um, you know, further. So 
now, and this is kind of like where my presentation is going to start. Uh, yeah, my, no, no, my presentation. Uh, sorry, my my demo. <laughs> and uh, ba basically, this is something that um, I've been working with uh, for a long time, right? And this is uh, a concept that it doesn't work for everyone, but I wanted to share with you guys since we're a community, uh, we all can learn from each other. And um, so basically, there's two ways of deploying code. Right in my mind, one one way is to create a, a deployable package each time that you do a modification, uh, or you combine multiple developers into build. You can create a, a a deployable package and then import that into or, or apply that from the asset library to your test uh, Dynamics GC5 instance. That's great. That's uh, perfect. Um, however, that will need time, right? So you need to have all the developers, uh, you know, make sure that they check in their, you know, their code for a specific uh, feature release, and uh, that take, let's say, you know, a week, right? Um, we, what you see in the screen, right, is more an agile release, right? Uh, so you may have multiple developers working on different things, and what this will do, what this agile release will do, is that it will allow you to um, you know, to isolate testing, right, for your functional consultants in a much more agile way instead of having to deploy packages each time, um, you know, having to build instances uh, or, or build and synchronize. Um, the agile release will allow you to uh, move changes from branch to branch and release them to a specific instance uh, or server for quick feedback from your functional um, uh, uh, consultant. So in, in, in this case, we have, uh, you know, multiple developers, right, checking in code and synchronizing code from our, you know, uh, uh, dev branch, right? When this code is checked in, you know, we do synchronize uh, that code with build. So we start building our, you know, uh, base code for deployable packages. Uh, for instances, uh, tier two, let's say, U, I mean, UAG or, or production. But also, before doing that, right, before we synchronize, what we can do is we can check in the code into the dev branch. We can merge that change into our test branch and synchronize it in, into our Dynamics 65 test environment, right? Uh, then we have a functional consultant. They go, they do the testing that they need to do in our modification. Um, and they can say, oh yeah, that's great, it works great, uh, let's, let's uh, put that as a candidate for our, you know, uh, uh, customer testing. At that point, you can synchronize that specific uh, change set into your build, uh, or if the functional consultant says, hey, you know what, this sucks, uh, there needs to be redone, you haven't um, uh, affected your, your code base in build, that can go back um, into their, their branch, into your developer, uh, they can modify that and do the same cycle again. So um, what we have seen over the years is that, uh, you know, there is no right or wrong answer here, right? But we uh, uh, we have seen that, you know, by providing an architecture like this one, uh, you can provide, uh, you can create a, a faster feedback mechanism for your developers, for your technical architects, for your customers. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, waiting, uh, you know, on a more waterfall type of uh, implementation nowadays is not an option. Uh, sometimes customers want us to implement something very fast, um, and we need to, uh, you know, adjust to, to that reality. Um, so that's going to be the end of the PowerPoint, and I wanted to show you guys something here. Um, and basically, uh, this is my, you know, um, our source, uh, uh, you know, our branching um, architecture. So as you can see, we have a our, you know, let me. We have the source. Hold on, this is slow here. Okay. All right. So we have our uh, dev branch and test branch, and, if they, and, and by the way, this is a, a very um, um, sandbox environment. 
And what I want to show you guys is what I talked about, about agile releases. So let's say that you have something, right? A, a some code um, that you want to modify because you need some, you know, some specific feedback from your personal consultant or your customer. Um, you know, there is a feature that, you know, multiple developers are working on, but there's a specific task that needs to be released uh, prior to, you know, all the tasks, and you want to make sure that you test that. So I'm going to make a really uh, basic uh, change here. So let's say that I want to add a new comment and say, um, you know, uh, please, you know, make sure you uh, step through this, right? Uh, well, that's not going to work because I need to uh, check out my my class. All right, so let me just uh, make sure and let me save it. And at this point, I, I have my code has been checked out. Um, you know, this code is pointing to the dev branch. Uh, you know, hey, we need to get this out super quick. Um, you know, we need to get feedback from our X, Y, and Z person um, so we can get other things ready for our main release on Friday, right? Okay, no problem. I, I come here, I make the change, and then I take in this change um, back into our uh, into my development branch, um, I add a comment. So I said, you know, dev, um, you know, urgent change, right? And and you can have uh, you know different comments if you want. I like to add the word dev uh, prior uh, because that's just clear, um, and I know where these changes are coming from, right? Uh, so then I can do checking. Once I do a check-in, um, we get you know some sort of message, and that this is ready to go. And now uh, you can look at the history of this. Um, bear with me. Just say word really slow. Um, and so here, here, here we go. Right. So we have our change set in our dev branch, um, being you know ready to. Uh, in, you know, to, to be merged or to be, you know, uh, uh, deployed somewhere. Um, so here you can see the specific, if you double click on this change set, you can see the specific uh, uh, element that you have modified and so on and so forth. And, um, and then, so going back to that diagram that I showed you about the agile release, right? So we need to release this pretty quick. Um, I'm going to come here and I'm going to say, Hey, you know what? I want to merge this dev branch change into my test branch, so I can synchronize my test branch with um, with my test instance. Right? In this case, you will you will right click, you will branch um, merge, and so this is interesting because obviously uh, our hierarchy said well from the main. Um, a branch. We created a child branch called Dev, right? From the our, you know, uh, and it's kind of backwards um, a little bit. From our uh, uh, Dev branch, we merge into a test branch, right? So automatically, you know, this knows that um, our, you know, merging our, uh, hierarchy is test from Dev. Uh, in this case, you can um, uh, choose a, a specific version or uh, select the change sets. So for this agile release that I'm talking about, you will select the second option. And then you will click next. And if you if you see here, right, you can see that change set, right? Um, and that change set will be moved into your um, test branch. Only that change, right? Because you're choosing just that change set instead of a whole version, and you can synchronize that change quickly into your test branch and test it. Uh, once that happens, um, you know, you will have to check in those changes prior to um, 
prior to synchronizing your, your test branch into um, into your test instance. So here we we say that to test, for example, and then uh, urgent change. Um, and you will check in these changes. And then if you look at the um, history of your test branch, um, you will see that that change has been checked in and synchronized correctly. So let's look at the history. All right, and there we go with um, a specific different changes. And at this point in time, you will go and synchronize your your local test instance with that branch. And obviously, those changes will come into our uh, AOS, um, you know, package takeout directory and what and whatever model that you created for for that is for for your customer or you know, uh, and then it will be reflected there. I don't remember. Uh, which model I created here. But, uh, okay, so that's pretty much the end of my presentation. I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. Um, Jason, are there any questions? All right, thanks, Eduardo. Yeah, we do have several questions that have come in already. Um, let me try to take them uh, sort of in the times that they, that they arrive. So um, going back to users and tokens, um, someone asked for local administrator rights, um, I'm sorry, let me jump back a little. Oops, sorry, this is a different question, but um, local administrator rights on an AOS, um, does that mean on dev machines and on LCS machines, um, is this disabled from the spring release on? Can you repeat that question again? Uh, local administrator rights on the AOS? Yes. Um, does that mean um, local administrator rights on dev machines? Yes. And is that still enabled going forward from the spring release of D365 on? Yes. Um, on the Agile approach, uh, how do you stop urgent changes you made from going into the build? Uh, is it already checked in so that it won't be deployed? Yeah, so it, it, anything that hasn't been checked in into a specific branch, right? Um, so, so let's say that that you are getting code uh, from your uh, dev boxes into the other branch, and you have a build server in place. Um, you can you can choose what you are synchronized to your build, right? Uh, you also can manage uh, your code base through multi dev branching. So let's say that you have, you know. 100 different developers, you can uh, segregate those changes into multiple dev branches and only um, choose the ones that you want to merge into your build instance. I, I don't know if that answers the question. Okay, and okay. going back to that earlier question, um, when the token is created, is there a best practice of which account to use to generate it? Uh, so, yeah, personal account or a kind of administrator account? In, uh, yes. Right. It's, and, and that's a great question, right? Because uh, usually the SDS project owner will have to do that step. And, and whoever is that person, either at the partner uh, uh, or at the customer, uh, they should use that account that they own, right? So let's say that you, Jason, are the, um, you know, uh, uh, I don't know. You, you know, IT director and you're in charge of creating these, if you have a Microsoft account, uh, you will use that account to create that token. All right, um, how do you handle a change on, on the same object? For example, developer one changes table A as a field, developer two now changes that same table as another field when you go to merge. Um, it sees it as uh, one change, not two. We don't and um, we don't want both. Right. So there is uh, two techniques, right? Um, not techniques, but two options. One option is that in in Visual Studio, right, uh, when you're setting up your branches, you can set up, you can check. There is a um, an option there to not allow multiple checkouts, 
right? Uh, and that what, what that means is that you know only one developer will be able to uh, check out an object in uh, in AX. Um, I do that. That's my preference, to be honest with you, because um, if if you think about it, when we are creating our TDDs or technical design documents, you know we have a scope, right? We know what needs to be created. We know that we need to create, let's say, ten tables and you know forms and things like that. Um, and you will assign certain things to certain developers to be done, right? Um, so what I what I don't do is to enable multiple checkouts um, in in the X. Um, uh, I do that in C sharp because it's easier. I mean, you will just um, merge the changes as you're checking in. Um, so the last person that is checking in the code uh, will will be responsible for merging their own changes into someone else's that merged uh, 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 prior. But in the X, um, uh, what I do is I, I don't allow that, and I assign specific objects to specific developers um, just to keep things clean and Lean. All right, next question. How does this setup change in the case of an ISV solution scenario? So ISVs are by, by nature, right? Uh, they will be, uh, they will not be included into your uh, model, right? Uh, or extension model. Um, uh, they can't, right? Uh, so what you will have to do is Basically, apply the extension model uh, through a deployable package into your Dynamics 385 instance, right? Because that's the, the ISV solution is a different extension model that lives in a different voting code layer. Although I mean, although we all know that in, in Dynamics 385 layers are not really uh, it's just a label, but um, but you will not be able to add your solution unless you move your ISV. Um, extension model to your model, right? Which can cause, you know, uh, multiple problems. All right, a basic question here, is it necessary to have a dev branch? Why not just work against the main branch? Yeah, so as, um, as, as we um, uh, said in, in the presentation, right, it's important to segregate to segregate your code based on who is working on your code, right? If you just do the main branch, right, and you connect your main branch into your um, uh, build server, what's going to happen is like all the bots that you are working through, right? So let's say that you are working in, in um, a, you know, a specific mo uh, a modification, uh, you know, you, you have a hundred different bots, um, you synchronize your dead branch for your build, and guess what? Now you have uh, in your in your bill, uh, you know, hundred different bugs. By segregating to a dev branch, uh, what you can do is actually, um, you know, you can segregate those bugs into the dev branch only before synchronizing them into the build server, right? Um, also, uh, on the agile uh, process, right, what you can do is um, moving those changes into, let's say, a test branch, uh, making sure that those bugs are tested and resolved uh, on, on a test server with relevant data, uh, so you don't have to um, uh, start releasing the code um, into uh, into a build server um, that that is not isolated that hasn't been um, uh, worked on properly. Um, uh. All right, I'm just going to do a few other questions here. Um, when you say synchronizing into test environments, are you referring to generating a package and deploying that into test? No, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm saying that is, um, you know, you will, you will go into, into the Dynamics 365 instance and pretty much synchronize that branch. So in this case, if we were to, um, where is it, uh, to have this, right? And we have our our dev branch. Um, you know what we will do is get latest uh, version. And um, so when when if, if if I'm moving code as I show you guys, right, from our dev branch to our test branch, and then we go obviously to our test server. I mean this is a, a, a dev server. Uh, what you will do 
um, you will follow the steps that we go through. We, we went through the presentation, but then you will also uh, get latest version, and that will bring your code into your AOS uh, local directory uh, 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 root here uh, into your extension model, and you will be able to uh, quickly see your changes reflected in the UI uh, on that server. So, so you will not do. So, you you can do a deployable package if you want to, but um, obviously, when you have multiple modifications going at the same time, uh, that you you may have to create a schedule for for deployment. Can you talk more about automated builds? What are the best practices? Do you typically run them daily? So, uh, from an automated build perspective, what I do, right? Um, is uh, you know every week um, I will run uh, you know depending on my schedule for um, for a UAT uh, uh, deployment we are working very fast through development and testing right with this agile release that I show you guys when we get feedback from the functional consultants and we actually get uh, modifications to go into the next step uh, into our build server you know what I do I do have a schedule. And that schedule uh, uh, reflects when my build uh, uh, happens, right? Usually is uh, a day uh, in the morning prior to the release day, the next day at night. So I have at least 24 hours, uh, well, not really 24 hours, but 16 working hours uh, to review any changes that might affect my deployment uh, uh, the next day. All right. Um, if we have multiple branches, how would we properly install the new X++ hot, hotfixes? Okay. So from a hotfix uh, uh, perspective, that's a, that's a more – so you will you will have to apply the hotfixes to LCS, you know, first of all, right? Um, there, there are hotfixes – I mean, in, and usually hotfixes for Microsoft right now in, update, uh, in version 8. Um, since they really got rid of overlay, um, you know, right now if you apply hot fixes, you won't, you won't, you won't, you won't change your code, right? So it's fairly safe to apply hot fixes um, uh, to OTS without modifying the code. Prior to that, I mean, prior to uh, uh, the, the um, channel command changes, right? Uh, that's another uh, a topic, um, you know, and by using overlay. Uh, that would be a problem. Today, that shouldn't be a problem. Right. Uh, another question here. Why create separate branches for each subfolder? And I think it's supposed to say why not. And, and copy .proj files versus one branch at the parent level. Uh, I don't know exactly. If that person can expand on that question. Uh, so basically, why not have only a parent branch and instead of parent child relationship? Is that the question? Uh, separate uh, branches for each subfolder? Yeah, I'll, yeah, we can move on if that's uh, kind of worded in a clear way. Uh, do you have yeah. a, a link to any other basic instructions as to how to install? Uh, oh, well, okay, we're going to skip that one. Um, can you show a uh, branch, branching hierarchy in your example? Yeah. So, in, the, in, in this case, uh, and this, again, this is uh, the option that is, uh, uh, I have my in this case, what I did, uh, believe it or not, my staging is my parent branch. This is the child, and this is the child of test, right? So that's my branch hierarchy. And okay. uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, a follow-up to that. Um, behind that POTST branch, what type of system do you use? Is it a dev box or is it a tier two environment? Uh, it's, a, it's a tier one. Uh, usually it's a dev test uh, uh, environment. Um, I don't, you know, if, when it comes to tier two environments, uh, I I don't use 
branching. I use deployable packages. Uh, when it comes to tier one environment, let's say it's something that I, I can deploy myself uh, uh, or my customer, let's say a BAM, a sandbox, a, a, a test, um, then I use the agile release uh, technique. Uh, everything tier two uh, and up, uh, I just deploy all packages. How would you remove a hotfix change from the VSTS? Well, so you so you can, right? Uh, unless you are moving those, um, that is, uh, unless you're creating an extension of those objects, uh, of the system objects that, or where the hotfix was affected, um, I don't see how you can do that. And it may be that I haven't been in the code for, for a long time. But my understanding is that uh, today, if you apply a hotfix, um, you know, there is, it, it goes to the um, uh, standard uh, code. And because today you have a true separation between the standard code and the extension model, and you, need, you can only access uh, system logic through the chain of command, I don't, I don't see how, how, how did a hotfix get into your BSDS? extension models on, you know, in the first place. Yeah, you know what I mean? So. Okay. And Eduardo, I know we're at the top of the hour here. Are you able to take a few more questions? Sure. I do have to uh, run. Uh, I'm, uh, I need to go to my customer office, uh, but I can probably take uh, three more minutes if that's okay. Yeah. Just yeah. let me know anytime you want to wrap up and we sure. can obviously um, capture these questions for, for uh, after the event. Um, so could you explain the branch hierarchy from dev to test to main, how that reflects on the LCS machines and which branch is the, is building the build <coughs> and test machine since we have both test and main branches? Right. So basically on, on, in, in LCS, right, um, LCS doesn't have awareness of your VSPS branching um, as far as I know. Um, you know, branching will be segregated into VSDS only. Um, and what was the second part of the question? I'm, I'm sorry. I think, uh, um, which branch is building the build test machine? Uh, oh, okay. We... So that that would be so that that you know what what I do, right? Um, I just to use branch. I mean, uh, uh, dev. Uh, now what I do is I use main. Right. Um, so uh, in my diagram, I know that I, I have dev into build. Um, however, I, I found that with Nemesis 55, um, you know, it's better to use the main branch into the build because that's what's going to create the oil packages for um, for for UAT and and uh, and, and production. All right. Well. Um there are quite a few more questions here, so um, perhaps this is a good a good point to wrap up. Or do you want to take one more? Yeah, one more. It's fine. All right. Um, so some confusion on the synchronize. You're linking uh, your test branch directly to your test AOS, but in the customer instance, would you expect that? So when talking about customer instance, um, are we talking about a Microsoft provision instance, meaning a tier two, let's say UAT production, or are we talking about a cloud um, uh, deployment tier one, uh, which is controlled by the customer? So, if, and if it's the second option, the first one. Yeah, no. So, so then at that point, you you cannot use this, right? Um, uh, uh, because tier tier two environment are controlled by usually by Microsoft. Um, and we don't have access to our to the boxes, right? So you will have to use the portable packages at the point. Okay. And does your POS TG branch reflect the status of production? No. Oh, uh, the the uh, POS TG, yes. I'm sorry, yes, because that in in this case, guys, uh, my my PO uh, staging will be my main branch. Right, I mean, it's just like different because I was doing something different here. But, but yes. So my main branch would be the the version that would go into uh, our our production uh, uh, build. And by the way, you have multiple builds, uh, you know, for a 
pre um, uh, pre production deployment. So you so you may have a build environment uh, for dev and test really right uh, to manage all those the de uh, de deployments there to go into UAT instance, but then you may have another build um, you know for a a production environment right. So you can segregate that um, you know any way you want. I know that some people don't, don't like to use multiple build environments. Uh, I'm not opposed to it. I mean, I think that it makes things much clearer in my view. All right, we're just looking through here. Um, there were a few questions that came in uh, very, very late that were uh, a little hard to manage here, but I think we've gotten the most of the uh, the key ones here. So if we didn't get to your question, um, we will make sure to uh, pass that along to Eduardo and the, and the Power Objects um, team. But I think this might be a good point to uh, wrap things up. So Eduardo, thank you so much for presenting, for taking the time to answer so many questions today. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Jason. And with that, we will wrap up today's event. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Thank you.